leaving and your and change you guys at all? Or what's kind of the feeling around the team? I'm sure happy for it, but what's kind of the feeling around the offense? We still feel good. I mean, we're happy that we're going to be able to finish out the year with Coach Scott. Obviously, he's a, a great coach, but also a great man. So I'm excited for the opportunity he's going to get. But we feel really good. We've had some good practices, and he'll be back. Uh, here in a couple days, so I mean we're we're gonna be ready either way, and we'll finish out the season. What kind of you changed from this time last year to entering the playoffs now, both on and off the field? What, how's the the experience of a year as a national championship winning quarterback impacted you? I think just like you said, having that experience of playing a year, and then also um, just I guess just knowing what to expect going into this this stage and in these moments ahead. So just kind of. Being there before and, and knowing what to expect, and you know, I feel like that gives me a lot of, it gives me an advantage just because I've been there before. Were you nervous last year? Yeah, a little bit, especially uh, before the national championship. A little bit before the Notre Dame game, but before the national championship, I was really nervous. But I mean, I, I feel good going into this year. Like I said, have some experience. Do you bring nerves at all? Are, the, are you nervous at all this year, or are you like? I think, you? yeah. I mean, I think before every game, I get you know butterflies and get a little bit nerved up, just like like any other game, but. Right now, I feel good and just trying to get as much work in as we can before we leave. What's your impression of the Ohio State defense? They're really good. I mean, obviously, statistically, they're one of the best in the country. And just from you know how they execute, you know, they keep everything in front of them, and they have really good corners, a good D line, obviously, and their backers are solid too. So, uh, just the whole defense is is really good, well coached, and you know they don't do a ton of different stuff, but they're really good at what they do, and they you know they they just. You know, line up and and if, we, if you can beat them, you can beat them. But if not, you know they got a really good plan and a really good defense. How, you, <clears throat> how do you like your lines match up with Chase Young? I mean, I think we have one of the best, if not the best, line in the country. So I really like our, our matchup against him. Obviously, he's a great player, and for anyone to go up against him is definitely a challenge. But you know, I like us over anyone else. What's your relationship with Justin like in high school? I know you guys had the same QB trainer. We yeah. Got a bunch together. I don't know. Like you're texting every day or whatever. But. Yeah, I mean, we, we would talk every now and then, and I would mostly see him at a bunch of camps, and we worked out a few times together. So we definitely had a good relationship. We weren't like super, super close, but he was only probably 30 minutes down the road. So we, like I said, worked out a few times and saw him at pretty much every camp in the summer. With, with what you're involved with here, do you have any time to pay attention to what he's doing? And yeah, I mean, yeah, the year he's had has been, it's been awesome to see. And obviously, him being from Georgia and us being in the same class, and Kind of his journey to get there has been, you know, really cool to, to see him do all those things. And I get to watch them, you know, they, they play at noon a lot. So we'll be in the hotel, we'll flip the game on, you know, we'll kind of bounce around. But I've got to watch them a good bit. You guys entered very similar situations in that you were both obviously one and two in, in recruiting and uh, entered places that have been in the playoff with incumbent starters and ended up kind of going in the opposite directions in year one. Have you ever thought like uh, roles have been reversed or? How things might have played out for you if you were the guy who had to wait a year on the bench or vice versa? Yeah. Yeah, just mostly I've had some of those thoughts and just really. Uh, really proud to be here and really happy that you know I made this decision. Obviously, not just because of that, but just because of the people here and my experience here has been so good. And you know, just thankful to be in a place like Clemson. What, what about his journey? You said has, has impressed you. What, what has stood out? From watching I, yeah, I think just everything not going perfect for him, and you know, having to kind of bounce back and uh, go to a different school and really making something happen there instead of just you know falling behind and. You know, thinking of what could have happened, and he just, he really just looked for what was ahead of him, and I mean, he's had a great year, obviously. You know, knowing the way you did, you you probably watch him now. You expected this to come in, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, he's a great player, and I knew that ever since high school, and just seeing how he's kind of worked and competed, and you know, I feel like he's earned everything he's gotten, and that's it's been cool to watch. You spoke of experience, what do you know about this process, like the whole playoff and all the kind of chaos that goes with it that maybe you didn't know when you were freshman? There's just a lot going on, whether it's like media out there or going to do some event with the with the bowl or whatever it may be. There's a lot going on, and uh, just kind of knowing how to channel that. And I learned that last year, and had a bunch of good leaders and seniors to show me that. And uh, I feel good about going into it this year, knowing what the schedule is going to be like, and knowing that I've been in a bowl game before, and, and knowing how it's all going to work. How did how did you react to the, <coughs> what's wrong with Trevor talk the first couple games of the season? Just kept going to work every day. I didn't really, you know, didn't really think about it too much. And I knew uh, what I was doing was going to pay off. And eventually, you know, obviously had some bad plays, but I knew I was doing things the right way. And really just kept working. And I feel like I ironed out a lot, a lot of those early mistakes. Do you feel you're playing at a higher level now than you were at this stage, certainly a year ago. 
Definitely, yeah. I just I think in all facets I'm playing at a lot higher level, just decision making, um, extending plays, you know, just knowing the whole offense, all those things. It's funny because Justin kind of endured a lot of the critiques and questions and criticisms last year that you kind of had to endure at the beginning of this year. When I talked to him about it, he's like, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I needed to learn from those experiences. Do you, do you sort of feel the same way about how your journey has played out? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's. I think you can learn. There's something to learn in every situation. and. Uh, sometimes it's easier to learn in the, in the bad situations than the good ones, so I definitely see what he's saying. And uh, for me, I mean, if that's the biggest adversity I face is getting some criticism and still winning games, then I'm pretty lucky. So that's how I looked at it and really just want to do everything I can to help us win. And if I'm doing that, then I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Is there anything about the Ohio State secondary that could be tricky for you, something that could catch you off guard? I'm sure they're, you know, they have, they've had, I guess, three weeks to, they're going to have three weeks to plan for us. I'm sure they'll have something that we haven't seen, but you know, like I said, for the most part, they keep everything pretty simple, but they do what they do really well, and they have really good players and uh, good corners, a good safety, a good safety that comes down in the box, plays a tight end some. So they do a lot of good things, and then obviously their D-line is, is really good, so it doesn't give you much time to, you know, look downfield. Do you think you'd be able to take your shots now? Yeah, I mean, I think... Just the playmakers we have, the O line, everything. We are, we're always going to have a chance to take shots downfield, and that'll be a, a part of the game plan, like it is every week. But uh, it'll just be about you know protecting and winning the matchups, and me putting the ball where it's supposed to go. What's your relationship like with Justin Taylor, going back to high school? Um, we, like I was just saying, we were about 30 minutes apart where we lived, and um, just I saw him at a lot of camps, and didn't know him really too well until probably junior year. And then we worked out a few times. We had the same QB coach. And um, it, I mean, we weren't super, super close, but we texted every now and then. And I'd tell him good luck and whatever he was doing or anything like that. I wonder how that fan base in, I don't know, Cherokee County or whatever, that there's not that much space between Cartersville and Marietta. Mm -hmm. so how you guys are drawn to that area. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's I, conflict. Yeah. There's a lot of Georgia fans over there. I know that because <laughs> living there, but yeah. But yeah. <laughs> you've, you've made a few puns of fans. Too, yeah, a couple, a couple. Did you, did you talk to him at all over the summer, like when he was trans when he had transferred, and kind of did, you, did he ever pick your brain about kind of what the experience of actually being out there playing was? Yeah, I, we did talk in the summer. I can't really remember what we talked about to be honest, but we just you know kind of caught up, and um, I really can't remember. I think it was just mostly small talk and just catching up. But, what, but yeah. What's Coach Deal meant? Have you seen like do you see similarities in him and yourself because of having worked with the same QB coach? Me and Justin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just. You know, some footwork stuff, and I think uh, one thing I really like about him, he has, he's really good poise, especially in the pocket, and he's just a smooth player. You know, you watch him, and he's super athletic, but never really looks like he's running hard, and I mean, he's just a great player. Is there something in the water in Georgia? I mean, look at Deshaun and you and Fields now. I mean, it's a, yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. Georgia's definitely got some some good players, and I mean, we being from there, we've known that, and there's a, so many good teams in Georgia. Well, on actual, on actual Christmas, I don't know what we're doing. We'll probably have like a little Christmas breakfast thing like we did last year. We did that in Dallas. And, but I'm going to go home here, I guess, Wednesday for a couple days, then we'll leave on Sunday. But, yeah, I'll have, I'll have an early Christmas, and then my second family out in Arizona will have a, another Christmas. Funniest Secret Santa gift that you saw? Uh, well, we do like a little Secret Santa thing with our team every year, and I got shampoo and conditioner last year from one of the players. and. I gave Will Sweeney a, a Christmas onesie, so we, we do some good stuff. I think just the way our program's built, uh, kind of how Coach Sweeney is, and you know we're built to play our best football at the end of the season, and that's our main goal is getting better every week. And you know when we focus on being our best instead of being the best, it usually takes care of itself, and that's kind of our philosophy instead of. A lot of teams look at who they're playing, you know, when they're going to play, all these things, and uh, we just focus on ourselves and, and being the best that we can be. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, y'all see the same thing I do, just, you know, how he works in practice, I think is the biggest thing, and, you know, every day comes to work, and he's a really smart player, too. A lot of people don't see the little things, but just his releases, his you know, knowledge of what's going on, the play, whether it's a run play or pass play, you know, he just really knows what's going on. And he's a really smart player, but also a huge playmaker, too.
Yeah, it's cool. Just like I said, his journey, you know, going from Kennesaw right near me to Georgia to Ohio State, and then us both playing in the semifinal out in Arizona is, is pretty cool, and it's going to be special. Who gave you the shampoo and conditioning? His name is Marquis Cease. So, yeah, he's one of our offensive linemen. Your brand, or was, did he just go out off the he, he got me Pantene, which I, I'm not really using that anymore, but uh, that was last year, so. <laughs> uh, it's Moroccan oil or something like that, yeah. I'm giving free advertising right now, but. <laughs> Wait till those name image like this guys come through and then. Uh, what, what you, you've been very open about sort of the, I guess, trials and tribulations that come with the stardom that you have inherited, uh, who has been the biggest key in helping you kind of maneuver all of that and, and put it all in perspective? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's necessarily one person. I think it's just a lot of people, uh, family, you know, coaches from high school, coaches now, everyone here, my teammates, you know, Chase, Bryce has been a really good friend to me and, you know, it's been, it's been really good to have a guy like him and obviously in the QB room, but also you know, we room together on, on for games and stuff. So just having those people, and then obviously uh, my relationship with God is really what has kept me grounded through you know all the good times and the some of the trials. So you know. it felt like I don't know. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you know, over the summer you were still kind of trying to figure out what is <coughs> how to handle this, how to use that platform best. Do you feel like you know the experiences that you've had this year have given you a better understanding of all that and yeah. a better focus? For sure, I think it, this year has been really good for me to put things into perspective and show me what's important. And then also just, I don't think you ever have it exactly right how to use your platform, but you're always learning how to you know, use it better and better. And I think I've done that for sure. Trevor, I apologize if you've been asked this before, but uh, you guys are gonna, the offense is gonna get Braden back uh, mm -hmm. for this game. What's it, what is that gonna add to the offense? What kind of a player have you seen of him at practice this year as he's kind of sat out? Yeah, I mean, we haven't just, he's done a lot of stuff with the scout team and been really selfless doing that because he hasn't been able to play. So haven't seen him that much this year, but obviously last year and then he's been back the past week and he's he's a great player and he's going to bring another dynamic to our offense. Just his athleticism and his size, he can block too. So he can just do it all. And obviously we have good tight ends anyways, but he'll bring another dynamic to us being able to throw the ball downfield, I think. Have you noticed maybe an extra bit of bounce excitement in his step? because he is yeah. back and able to play? For sure. I mean, I, I've thought about him a lot, just what he's had to go through. It's definitely been tough for him and a uh, situation that would be tough for anyone. So seeing how he's handled it and, you know, it's it's cool having him back and he's a little bit more excited to be, you know, practicing because he gets to, you know, contribute and help out. During the season, did you, you know, just kind of kind of keep his spirits up when you could and tell him to hang in there? And... Yeah, we, we, we talk all the time, obviously, but uh, whenever I'd see him in the past, especially the past month or so, I'd be telling him, hey, we only got – Couple more games in your back, you know. Just keep, keep reminding them that you know he's almost back to where he can play. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I man. I don't want to ever discredit discredit anything that anyone else has done. I think everyone up there was a great player and deserved it. But, you know, I think it's just how the story's been written and, you know, it kind of works perfect for us. I mean, we're happy where we're at. You know, it would have been great to have some guys there, obviously, just for, you know, for them and for our program. But uh, we're happy where we're at and we're just glad to get the chance to, you know, prove ourselves. And, how would you describe how that story's been written? Yeah, just, um, just all year kind of been, you know, taking the back seat, I think, a little bit, which is, you know, it's whatever. I mean, I think that's just how you know, the season's gone. But uh, I don't think we've, you know, it's been worked out perfect though. We've been in the back seat, you know, under the radar, and you know, this is the time now we get to actually prove ourselves. Could you have ever thought when you walked off that field against Alabama last year that that's or one, one second? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Y'all saying that? <laughs> Why do you think that story is written now? Yeah. Um. Fifteen and zero team that's now won twenty, what four, five, eight straight. Being, yeah. Being in the back seat. I think it's just, you know, every year people want something new. And, you know, last year we were the new team, you know, Alabama won the year before and 
we were kind of up and coming and you know it was we knocked Alabama off and everyone loved us and after that it's like okay who's going to win next year and they kind of they want something new and I think that's just how it is and then you know we have a close game and everyone thinks that you know we're not any good and that's just that's just the way it was all year and which is fine we're I mean, we got the opportunity we wanted so right where we want to be but I think that those are two of the things that happened. It was obvious that Coach Sweeney was pretty quiet about that narrative until after South Carolina. Yeah. In what ways does he use that narrative in private with you guys? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it a lot, just kind of the things that are, you know, how people kind of contradict themselves. They'll say one thing one week, and then a month later they'll change their mind and say something else. And it's just, you know, it's just funny how that happens all the time. And he, we talk about it all the time, and we use that as fuel. And he's really good about, you know, he kept it quiet. And then he, but at some point, this is his team, you know, he wants to defend us. So I, I respect what he did. Yep. Kind of 